So, so I got my ticket for Saturday night. We're about to go watch it. I'm in the movie theaters right now. So uh, we're gonna see what this. Uh, we're gonna see if this movie is good or not. Uh, hey guys. So I got here super early. So they haven't even started showing the trailers yet. But do you think there's a chance? There's a good chance we'll see Craven in Secret Wars. No. I don't think so either. Hey, there's Terrifier 3. I haven't, haven't made a video yet, but I will soon. Hey, there's Terrifier 3. I haven't, haven't made a video yet, but I will soon. So I just came back from watching Saturday Night, and the movie's about how the first episode of SNL came to be here. We got Michael Lorne, who was the producer, and uh, we got all these actors that were new at the time, like Dan Aykroyd, Chevy Chase, John Belushi, and uh, the movie is about how what the struggles were to get to the first episode. Oh, the executive producer is trying to cut the show or sh shorter, or trying to just get canceled before it even begins. The movie moves pretty fast and it's paced and it doesn't give you time to breathe. It's, it's really quick paced and there was a lot of one shots, one shot scenes, which I which is really appreciated because you don't really see that a lot in movies. I feel like you're starting to see it more in movies now, I guess, but everyone's, everyone's performances were really good. You had, I gotta lock my doors, I forgot to lock my doors, it's pretty dangerous. But you got Michael Corey Smith playing playing Chevy Chase, and he looks a lot like young Chevy Chase. He did a really good job playing him. There's, there's, this, there's a scene in the movie where this guy, Chevy Chase is talking to this guy, and so he, the guy is talking to Chevy Chase about how, oh yeah, you're gonna be, you're gonna be a hot shot. You're gonna be doing all, doing all the, you're gonna be getting all this money and doing all this stuff, and everyone will know your name. And I, I mean, I don't, I've seen a few Chevy Chase movies, and I've done, I've, I haven't done a lot of research on Chevy Chase, but I did, I do know that event that. He, he was pretty hard to work with when it came to movies and shows. And I know he, he doesn't really appear in movies anymore um, for a while now. I, I know for a while now, but but I feel like that scene was kind of like a quick jab at the real Chevy Chase, like foreshadowing kind of. But I just wanted to mention that Chevy Chase thing because I've heard stories Chevy Chase isn't really a good person, like a nice person, I guess. But other than that, Matt, wait, what's his name? Matt Wardy? He plays John Belushi, and uh, he was just a vibe. Like, like I, I, like I was laughing when, when he, when they cut to the scene of him in the bee costume, just skiing. I'm like, that's me right there. Like I'm by myself in a bee costume skiing in the snow, but it's funny because where I live they don't we don't we don't get snow, but I, it, it looked like a vibe. And uh, Gabriel LaBelle plays Mike Lorne Michaels, and I don't know a lot I, I don't know a lot about Lorne Michaels, and I don't know a lot about the real Lorne Michaels in person, but I think he did a fine job playing Lorne Michaels. I think I think. Well, I think he did a fine job acting in general. I saw him in uh, The Fablemans, directed by Steven Spielberg, it too, like it, that came out in 2022, and he was great in that. He was really good. He was really great in this. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Gabriel LaBelle is kind of like moving up in acting and like becoming more, slowly more mainstream, I guess. But yeah, he should really be in more movies. I agree. And uh, I'm, I'm agreeing with myself, I guess, because I'm... Talk, I'm not talking to anyone else. But Delon O'Brien plays Dan Curry and he did a really good job. Eh? He he did kind of like um, I, he was trying to imitate like Dan Curry's 
like I don't know what you call it. You call it like a um I, I I'm really uneducated, but like not like a southern accent, but like a like a Jersey like accent. But he I, he he had those moments where he was tr kind of trying to sound like young Dan Aykroyd, right? like oh what what you mean you you mean you don't catch any oh, I don't know I don't know but but Dylan O'Brien's I mean he's been killing it anyways. Cause I know he would, he he used to be in those Maze Runner movies, but I saw him in Cato Lake, this 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 HBO movie that came out on Friday on HBO, this streaming movie. I saw him in Cato Lake, and he was pretty good in that. And then I see him in this. I'm like, what the hell? Like, why isn't this guy in more movies? Like, I used to think Dylan O'Brien was like. Like, oh, he's only in, like, those, like, teenage movies, I guess. Like, I don't even know what that means, but he's doing, he's doing great. And, uh, Willem Dafoe is in it. He's been in a lot of movies recently. He's always been in movies, but I feel like he's revamping his acting career, which is good for him, you know? He was in Beetlejuice. He's in Poor Things, Kindest Things, Kind of Things. I don't know what that movie's called, dude. Um... And the uh, way way other stuff. He's in a lot. He's been in a lot of stuff recently, and uh, the movie moves really quick. Like it's really fast paced. It does not give you a lot of time to breathe. And uh, the whole story, the whole movie is about how they had to get the act together, and they put together the SNL show ninety minutes before I even started. And I I doubt. I doubt everything that happened in the movie actually happened in those 90 minutes, but it was still really cool to see how like fast paced everything was and like how upbeat everyone was. And Andy Kaufman, there's a guy, I, I didn't, I, I forgot to look up his name, the actor, but I, I saw Man on the Moon, the, the Jim Carrey movie where Jim plays Andy. I saw Man on the Moon and I watched it like a few months ago and I did a little bit of research on Andy Kaufman and I actually I actually had no idea Andy Kaufman was gonna be in this movie and I, I, I should have known I should have known SNL and he, he was in SNL for, for a little bit but the actor that played that played the Andy Kaufman he, he, he did no right job I know I know Jim Jim Carrey had the more like and death and like character study role I guess like but I don't want to compare the actors I don't know what I'm doing but he did really good he was he wasn't he wasn't more of like Latka mode the whole time we we didn't really get to hear him say, speak his actual voice but he was more in like the Latka voice the whole time which was fine the movie's not about Andy Kaufman, it's about the SNL. But it was still really funny to see, it, it was funny to see all his scenes and uh, that Latka voice is never gonna get old. Dude. It's like, I want a llama. Oh no, I wanna play the record player. He, he, didn't, he didn't say those, he didn't, he, he didn't say those, those things, but this is just my like terrible Andy Kaufman impressions. I'm gonna, I'm gonna play music on the radio now. Terrible, terrible Andy Kaufman impressions. But I'd say go watch the movie. I mean, even if you're not the biggest SNL like fanatic, even if you're not the biggest SNL fanatic, I I, I think it's a well-made movie. It it didn't. It looks like a documentary at some points. Like I know it's a biopic, but at some points it does look like you're actually watching a documentary. The whoever filmed. I, I don't remember who the who the cinematographer was, but they did an amazing job. Yeah. We got all the one shot scenes and then like and then like the grainy film look. Like I I wonder if this was shot on film rather than digital. Again, I'm I, again I'm really uneducated. I didn't really do any of my research with the movie. I'm just reviewing it, like right coming out right from the theater. But. I think you should watch this movie. Don't listen to me, right? But 
If you just if you just bored and and got nothing else to do, go watch this movie. It's not good. It's not a bad movie. It's really good. It has a lot of funny funny scenes in the movie, and I mean that's probably expected, right? Because the whole movie is about how a bunch of comedians came together to make a nightlife show on Saturdays. So it's a, so it's bound to be funny. But yeah, I mean, uh, I still gotta do my Terrifier three video review. I haven't done that yet, but I'm making this. I'm making this video. But yeah, I thought I thought about doing something different. You know, actually like like putting my face on um, camera to review this movie. I, I kind of tried to do that with like my long legs video back in July, but. I had sun I had sunglasses on. I was in my room. I don't know what I was doing. I was trying to like trying something different, but then I'm trying something something other different, but with kind of like the same format. But yeah, um, I don't really score movies. I just talk about them, I guess. But maybe in the future, maybe in the future, I'll have like a score, like a score rate on how I'm gonna rate movies and stuff. Right now, right now, I only rate them on Letterbox. Um, and it's on my channel if you want to, if you're interested in looking at my Letterboxd account. But other than that, the movie really does, it does put the stress on you about how stressful it was in those 90 minutes before they went live. And Billy Preston is in this movie too. And Jim Henson, dude, I felt bad for Jim Henson the whole time. He's such a nice guy, yeah. And uh, this Sesame Street guy, and everyone laughed, laughed, laughed at him, and like they clowned on him, and they just had no idea what the Jim Henson, what the man Jim Henson would become. But man, I felt bad for him. But he, the the actor that played Jim Henson, also did a really good job. He looked a lot like him. I'm not sure if he sounded like him because I, I don't remember what Jim Henson sounds like. I, uh, I'm, but yeah, man, like. And then I thought we were gonna get more, I thought we were gonna see more of like the show unravel by the end, but we just kind of, we, we get like a little skit between the the glasses guy. I don't remember his name, sorry, but we get a little skit between him and John Belushi, Matt, Matt Woody, and, and they, they finished a the little sketch, sorry, not skit, sketch. And then the movie ends, but I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I just wanted to see more of like the unraveling and like what happened after, like while that was going on and the aftermath to see the success. But yeah, I mean, maybe the movie could have been a little longer, but I still think it was a good time. And I'd say go watch this movie. But other than that, I don't mean, have, I don't really have a lot more to say. I'll probably drive on the way home and say, Gosh, I should have said that or like I should have mentioned that but maybe maybe I will maybe I'll like edit myself in again if I think of something else to say about the movie but other than that it was a good movie all right you guys um go watch if you want all right and don't um I appreciate you subscribing and liking other than that I'm glad thank you for watching if um if you made it this far into the video comment cookies cookies or coke but other than that, see you guys next time and I'll see you. Bye.